So I'll be doing a two for one. So this is pretty cool. So my new motors just came in. Uh, this is a Team Powers uh, 17.5 and this is a 13.5. I've already uh, done a 21.5, but I figured I'd talk about these in the same video instead of having 20 videos. Uh, but here we go. So we're looking at 147 for the 17, 147 for the other one. So they weigh the same. Uh, now there's less windings, armature, everything looks the same, so it must be maybe thicker wire, possibly. If that's the case, I have no idea. I'm not going to take these apart and measure it, but that would actually be very good if that were the reason why. Oh. Now to make things easier for me, I'll deal with Gauss later. Right now, I'll deal with KVs. Now, I do have a power supply that I could plug in and do a constant measure, but for some reason, if I use a power supply, I cannot pause the KV. Uh, so that's the reason why I actually prefer to use a battery. And it's something I have not been able to figure out. Uh, but let's see. So let's go ahead and start. What would be good? 17.5. 17.5 is a good motor to start with. So the motors are very similar constructed, very similar weights. I mean, most motors uh, around this spec tend to be uh, just under 150 grams, usually between 146 to a 149, uh, regardless of whether uh, it's one brand or the other. Most of them shoot for that. Uh, but now I'm switching over to 13.5. So 13.5, uh, you, you're obviously going to get a difference in KV. And that is just simply because it has more turns. Uh, something to keep in mind if you're watching this for the very first time or you're wondering about 17.5 or 13.5, which one should I get? Uh, it's definitely going to depend on the application. 13.5 uh, is go always going to be a much faster motor compared to 17.5, assuming things are similar. So for example, here we go. So these are the V5s. So if you look at the part number, it's the same part number. And then if we look at the Gauss, it's very similar Gauss. To be honest, I got lucky on this 13.5. This one's actually uh, much higher Gauss. Well, it's not much higher. It's just higher. Uh, is it going to make a massive difference if the rotors were swapped? Probably not, but I would like the a uh, bit stronger rotor. Uh, but let, you know, the rotors are close enough to where this 13.5, just because it's a 13.5, uh, will rev fire. So if you're an individual that's debating between 17.5, 13.5, just to bash and have a little bit of speed, just go 13.5. Uh, but again, depending on the application, that's touring car. Uh, all the touring car 13.5, that's, that's pretty fast. Uh, especially uh, depending on the timing on the ESC and all that good stuff. I mean, some of those cars, they will get to 60 miles per hour really, really fast when geared properly. Uh, you definitely don't want to crash those vehicles. Um, well, I guess you don't want to crash any vehicle, unless you're doing it on purpose for some reason. Maybe you're testing durability. Uh, but uh, you have to look at some of the classes. So for example, many places will have a uh, 21.5 uh, touring car, and it could be a sportsman or a regular touring car, which is generally expert class. Some places might have a 17.5. Now that 17.5, you would have to check, is it sportsman, is it intermediate, or is there a 17.5 expert? Uh, so that's going to depend. 13.5, uh, I believe that tends to be the entry level for mod, uh, which is, as far as I'm concerned, expert. Uh, now, if you're doing off-road, most places will run a 17.5 uh, buggy, two-wheel drive buggy. So this is going to be your spec class motor. But if you're running four-wheel drive buggy, you're looking at a 13.5. Now say you're running short course. Short course, honestly, 13.5 is my favorite motor. Now, of course, you can always go down to a uh, something smaller, uh, something with lower turns, 10.5, 9.5, 7.5. That's pretty quick for short course. But 13.5, for me, that's that's just my favorite uh, because the track that I have available is a, a slow track. 
I mean, it has several jumps, but it's it's shorter than some of the other tracks. If you're running a faster track, maybe you want the faster motor. But 13.5, I think, is great. 17.5, sometimes I would struggle to make some of the jumps, but I still enjoyed it. And I have some of those older videos, uh, short course. If you just type in SET 17.5, you will find it, uh, 13.5. And then I think I ran a 9.5. I think it was a 9.5. Uh, but 13.5, I think, was sort of the sweet spot, just enjoyable. Um, let's see. So, uh, as far, far as rotor strength, I mean, they're close, right? Uh, but let's look at the KVs. Now, I'm going to go into 17.5 first. And the reason why I want to go into 17.5 is, uh, wait, was it 17.5 or 13.5? Yes. Uh, so, uh, I'll go 17.5 first and then 13.5 because 13.5, I used to run a V3 model, which is two models ago. Uh, but let's look at the 17.5. So 17.5, I generally shoot for that 5. Uh, I'm, I wasn't going to chase it, so 4.7 is close enough. Uh, and I can get a pretty good idea of where it stands. Even if I can pair this 5.7 to this 5.3, I'll get a pretty good idea. Uh, so this one we're looking at uh, 31, 47, 45 degrees, 46 degrees. We're looking at 29.72. So this is just to have a uh, benchmark. And this is the Phantom Icon 17.5. Uh, I ran this in the short course. Uh, so this is why. I also ran this in the buggy. Uh, so if you've seen some of the sportsman videos with the buggy, I ran this one in, in buggy for, this was the motor I ran the longest in that buggy. I, I really did like it. It was a very nice motor. Now, I'm curious about the Gauss. So, let's go ahead and look at the Gauss. I didn't think of looking at the Gauss for... Uh, so, it's it's very... I, I would say it's very similar. So, the Gauss is very similar. So, at this point, uh, the difference is going to be more than likely the can. Uh, just the stator will make the difference. Uh, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. So yes, uh, this one here, even compared to this one. All right, so the Phantom Icon does pull uh, more KVs uh, than the Team Powers for a similar strength rotor, similar size uh, rotor. Uh, let's look at the Phantom Helix. Ah, perfect. I do have a 4.8 versus a 4.8. Uh, sorry, 4.7. So 4.7, 43 degrees, 44 degrees on this one. Close enough. Uh, differences in the weather. Uh, and we're looking at almost 3,300 KVs, 2,932. All right, so the Phantom Helix has uh, just under 300 KV more. Uh, what's the Gauss on that one? I'm curious. I wonder if the Helix has a weaker rotor. Uh, 17. No, it does not. It actually has a compared to 17.5. It actually has a stronger rotor. They're, they're the same. Uh, 1684, 1699, 1708, 1684. So it's the same strength rotor uh, compared to it. Um, are you really going to notice the difference? Mm, depends on the gearing. Uh, just gear appropriately. Uh, and you will see. So let's look at the hobby wing. Uh, do I have something close? Oh, here we go. 4.7. Oh, we have a 4.7. 4.7, 44 degrees. We're looking at 3,045. So, so this one's closer. It's just a uh, 100 kV more uh, compared to that one. Uh, so that's where the 17.5 stands and yeah so this one this one I didn't have a team powers I've never had a team powers in 17.5 before uh, that I tested that I tested I used to a long time ago but I never tested it that was long before I did this uh, but 13.5 13.5 this is the one that I'm interested in looking at the data because I just typed it in so this is actually the first time I compare it and that was perfect 5.0 and this is where I'm leaving it uh, because the first time I ran it, uh, it was 5.9. And the end bell uh, with the 17.5, I think it was the 17.5, it was really off. The end bell said 50, but the timing was actually 56. Uh, so for this one, I don't remember what the difference was. But the little hash marks on the timing, those things are off. 
uh, or at least they were really off on the 17.5. So be careful. Don't use the end bell thinking that's the timing. Um, but let's see. So based on that five, uh, 3,700 at, that is very good timing, uh, 36. Uh, and if we compare it to, I guess I can compare it to this one somewhere in between. Uh, see, KV's pretty good. Uh, timing is very similar. Uh, let's see how it does compared to the R1 Gauss. Now I'm curious. Uh, R1, somewhere up here, I think. 13.5. Wow. <laughs> All right, that R1 is definitely a torque monster. Uh, so the R1 is a torque monster for sure. Uh, so we're not really comparing apples to apples there because that one is insane. Well, <clears throat> hmm, interesting. 17 and then almost 1900. That's quite a spread on the R1. I like the way the uh, team powers is more consistent there uh, with the Gauss. Uh, but let's see, slot machine. Uh, this was also a very nice motor for a period of time, except for I broke a rotor. Actually, I don't remember if it was a 13.5 at this point. I'd have to look at my notes or if it was the 21.5. Uh, if, anyway, I've broken a few Trinity rotors. That's a different story, though. Uh, but let's see, 4.8. 4 we'll look at the 4.8 KV on the slot machine. And I do like slot machines. They're nice. It's just I broke rotors. Uh, Hobby Wing, I've never had an issue. Actually, Phantom, I've never had an issue either. Uh, but let's see, 4.8. We're looking at uh, 38.59. So about 150 kV more at more timing, though. So you do have to run more timing. What if I run the same timing? 36, 37.63. All right, so close to 60 kV more. But it's much lower amp, so this one's going to run cooler, way, way cooler uh, than this one. Uh, but then again, uh, gearing is going to matter. What's the rotor? So rotor gauss, uh, rotor gauss is important to see because if the Trinity has a, a weaker rotor, you're going to have to gear much lower to make up the torque. Uh, here it goes. 19. Oh, it's the same thing. Uh, it's the same thing. Right? Rotor strength is the same. So, uh, yeah, so the difference is in the can. In the can. Uh, hobby wing, did I compare it to the hobby wing? Uh, five amps, uh, much higher timing though. Uh, 35, so if I look at 35, whoa, whoa. Uh, I guess I never realized how nice the G4 was. Uh, I remember how, uh, let's see, 35 degrees versus 36, five amps, 3.8. So the hobby wing is 3.8 amps, 35 degrees, and it's 3,800 kV. So that's 100 kV more with less amp draw at around the same timing. So over one amp less draw. Uh, that's pretty impressive. But uh, here, let me copy the uh, V3 specs. So V3, this is, this is the one I want to compare. I want to compare the uh, previous... Well, two models ago versus the current one. So I'll just copy it down here uh, just for fun. And I have this uh, 4.8 amp, uh, 47 degrees for that. Holy smokes. Uh, all right. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure I don't have Gauss for this one because back then I didn't have a way to measure Gauss. And that is correct. Uh, so here's the thing. Uh, don't take these and don't compare them linearly because something just if you've watched some of my other videos one of the things that I've commented before is uh, if you have a stronger rotor you're generally going to get less kvs more torque if you have a weaker rotor you're generally going to have more rpm but less torque so you're going to have to gear appropriately uh, uh, this is this is a fast revving motor so the v3 was probably a revving motor and the v5 is probably a torque motor as far as team powers is concerned uh, I wish I had a gauss reading for this one uh, because that is a significant difference as far as kV uh, oh this is actually pretty good so I can make another comment so 47 50 53 notice how we increase the timing so this is a total of six degrees of timing 
Notice how the KV only goes up by 100, but the amp draw goes up by almost 50%. Well, that's probably 40%. Uh, so that's why you really want to be careful with timing and not overdo it. So you're going from something lower, that'll probably make sense, but over here, probably not. And that's something that happens. Usually 21.5s, it's more apparent, I would say. Even, yeah, 21.5s. 25.5s, you will rarely, rarely exceed uh, an amperage that is, say, unsafe. Uh you can get really close to 60 degrees and it'll still be below five usually uh, those motors run usually pretty cool if they're geared correctly um, but let's see do I have uh, well looking at the 4,000 so let's say 300 kV more but at 10 degrees more so that's that's sort of the kicker uh, the v5 is definitely a torque motor compared to the V3. So something to consider. So if you have a V3 and you're used to it, you're already geared right, it works. I mean, if it's not broken, why fix it? I think the expression is, if it ain't broke, why fix it? I don't know. Um, but if you're considering a motor with torque, maybe you're running short course and um, somebody's selling a V3, but you can get a V5, maybe you should consider the V5. Uh, that's maybe, that's something for you to consider. Uh, but anyway, uh, these are the specs uh, right here. And uh, it was actually kind of nice comparing both motors at the same time, since they're the same brand. Maybe I'll do that more often someday, I don't know. Uh, well, I hope this information was useful, or at least entertaining. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one. Oh, 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 o